Welcome everyone to another episode of MMO Concept Art. We've just spent some time with Nelson looking at some of the terrain stuff he's been working on. Every week the man amazes me with what he's doing. But now we're going to take a look at what of all the art students are doing and I can be amazed by that. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing well. Doing well. Sweet. All right, who wants to go first? I saw a bunch of stuff going into Dropbox, so I know it's out there this week. That's yeah. Richard. I'll go first. All right, Richard. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, you you made me a guy, didn't you? See how he is? He didn't even. Which what? Sorry. Uh, Nelson didn't warn me that he put me in charge of things. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now we're working on it. Okay, what are we seeing? Uh, right now I'm seeing nothing. There we go. We are seeing rifles. Ninja rifles. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so I... Decided to go through and do the basic shapes as uh, as Steve said last week, and then continued with that and basically refined it down to a, a rough outline of what it might look like. And this is essentially the point at which I would take it over into 3D Studio and use it as a reference. And, and I like being able to see both of those and demonstrate how quickly a few very basic primitive shapes can inspire you to move forward. That's a nice jump between those two. I was actually quite happy with how well it, uh, it came together. I wasn't expecting it. Like, I've never done that sort of basic shapes, blocking it in like that before. Did you find so, it kind of inspirational? Like, oh, I might not have really thought of that. Yeah, originally this was actually going to be more of a standard design with the magazine where the grip is. And I thought, well, I just basically switched the two boxes for those two points around. I'm like, yeah, that works better as a bullpup. I'll try that. Very cool. And that's the nice thing with primitives like that is, uh, especially like if you put them on separate layers, you can just slide stuff around till you go, hey, that looks really cool. Yeah. And I know Derek always said that you got to have a reason for what you did, but uh, sometimes, uh, hey, that looks really cool is actually a reason, especially in game design. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the following one that I have is more of a standard design, but rather than having the magazine in the middle in front of the uh, grip, I thought about uh, maybe some kind of hatch or something that opens up from the side, and you basically pull out the spent magazine, put a new one in, close the hatch, um, throw the handle forward to basically connect whatever that mag is to the systems of the gun. It charges it up and you're ready to, ready to shoot. I like it. And if it ends up in the game, I'm going to record a grand with that ping when the thing is spent, and I'm going to attach it to it. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I love that ping. Yeah, it's very distinctive. <laughs> yes, it is. There's a guy in our airsoft group. He was so proud that he had one of those guns, and it was like uh, it actually does pop the clip out when it's finished when you fire the last BB. And oh, it does it with a BB one too. Was. Yeah, he <laughs> discovered how bad that was when he when he shot the last BB, and we were playing in a forest. <laughs> ping and then it gave away his position? Well, no, it was just ping and then instead of, you know, making a sound when it landed on the ground so that he could tell where it was. Oh, he lost it. Gone. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, great, now you can't reload. <laughs> now, I've fired a real one. Very cool weapon. Hyper accurate, for, especially for something invented 100 years ago, practically. Yeah. Well, 60 years ago, whatever it was. <laughs> But yeah, and mostly because if that's an energy type weapon, making a ping like that will be hilarious to me. But... Yeah. 
And uh, one of the things I toyed around with this one, like the the previous rifle, you can see you've got the rear sight at the back, and then again up at the front. And for this one, I was initially going to have uh, the rear sight sort of built into the back portion of the uh, of the mount for the uh, for the rack up top. Okay. But one of the key things in any weapon is the ability to adjust your sights when needed. And if it's buried in there, that would be a nightmare. So what I'm probably going to do for the final version is I'm going to move the mounts forward and stick in a rear sight. Just because, you know, if, if you lose function. your rail mount, yeah. And if you lose your rail mount, you need to have a backup. So I like it. That's not so much that's not so much a game design perspective. I doubt we'll have that in there. But if you're gonna design a weapon it should be functional. Well yeah, if you gotta model it anyway, it may as well look like it would actually work. Yeah. I like that. I like that thought going into it. That's awesome for some very nice basic designs. I can't wait to see uh some of these coming into three D. It would be fun, definitely, to work on it. Um, this one is going to require a lot more work, I think. Um, but I'm basically looking at something similar to Hulk and Cannon. But um, there would be enough differences, I think, between energy and projectile-based weapons that the same sort of rotary fashion isn't necessary with a laser weapon. So it would just be a case where it's just there's a lot of cooling, a lot of heat sinks, and stuff like that to dissipate all the heat coming through the barrel. But essentially, it would be a single barrel design. And this would be the sort of thing that you've got the, you know, the no. cable essentially going between your backpack and the weapon system itself. Okay. So this would be the sort of thing that you're not using magazines. And, and, and because of that cable thing, it kind of looks like a very 1950s pistol, but that's more like a heavy gun, right? With two yeah. handles? Yeah. Yeah, um, this would be the same, same sort of thing as like uh, the mini guns today, where you've got the hand at the back here and a thumb trigger, and then you've got the other hand up front, basically helping to aim the son of a gun. Okay, yeah. When you first popped it up, I looked at him like, "That's an interesting pistol," but that's the feeder. <laughs> that's the feeder. Where's the grip? And then I was like, oh, "That's not a pistol, Steve. That's a huge gun." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was hoping to have a character in place that would give uh, sort of a scale to it, but that's not ready yet. Yeah, very cool. We could definitely do some awesome things with uh, normal maps to make those look very cool. I thought it was a pistol as well. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad I was almost ready to call you out for really designing like a 1950s B-movie gun and <laughs> literally yeah. seconds before I was going to say something I realized what it was like oh I would look like an idiot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries and uh, yeah these are basically just going to be you know it's meant to be there as a placeholder but the idea is gives you the impression that you've got a venting system that would kick all the hot gases and stuff like that forward away from the user <laughs> It, it might be interesting to run cooling cables to the gun too. So you instead of like having like this huge power thing, you have this huge cooling thing for the gun. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, do that. Or maybe, uh, maybe both. Yeah, dual tanks like an acetylene setup, and then somebody can shoot you and blow you to pieces. Oh, that'd be mean. <laughs> <laughs> or it would just vent all the hot gas from the gun. Well, fine. That would also be bad. <laughs> but yeah, I like it so, so far. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh, that one fleshing out a little bit. I like the cool. idea of normal maps with all the ribbing and vents. And... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a much easier way to accomplish all that detail without actually having to model it in, in the, like, the final model. Yeah. Because... Trying to do that and keep your poly count down, that's a friggin' nightmare. Yeah, yeah, it is. We love normal maps. <laughs> and they're just fun. I just I just love to play with them and I don't know, it's, maybe it's the kid in me, just the the optical illusion there trips my trigger every time, never stops. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, as far as the basic web concepts, this is uh those are the three like 
up with. I was hoping to get more, but I ran out of time. It's all right. Three is good. And uh, I've also got the, well, I'm, I'm still working on the mesh itself, but uh, I do have a the beginnings of like a base mesh for a character. Awesome. And that's this one right here. Very nice, so very I nice. Was, I was going to go through and set up the toes, and I realized the characters are never going to be barefoot, so uh, I'm not going to give myself that headache unless I need to. Yeah, I mean, the Aletheans, we've kind of put ourselves into doing that, but I, I don't think we should. With I don't think there should ever be an instance where they're barefoot on the human side. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's more work needlessly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to work on the hands and see if I can basically get the the control rig in place as far as the facial features, the head, the hands, and all that. And then once that's done, whatever well, character references we have, the control mesh can be distorted to fit that shape. Like, probably players don't have any need to be barefoot, but I can see in impoverished places the NPCs being barefoot or just wearing sandals or that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. It's I, definitely I can... one of those things we can put in later. It's just yeah. initially I was like, yeah, I don't feel like breaking right. my back with toes. <laughs> we can normal map their toes. Yeah, that's true. You can yeah, do that too. Or we can normal map really torn up old looking footwear and never even deal with toes. I'm willing to do that. So am I. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah, I Nick's right. We could, boots. <laughs> we could normal map those in and especially in a third person perspective, you'd never be able to tell. Yeah. And I mean, how often do you watch somebody playing with their toes, like doing weird things? Like they're not really big in body language, you'll be watching their hands and face anyway. Yeah. Except now you're making me specifically want to do that, Nick. You you know my triggers. <laughs> Foot fetish? No, it's just, well, how often do you... Well, now we have to do it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like when I was building that pistol, one of the things I didn't pay attention to initially, which I really should have, was the unit setup. <laughs> and I just made the model. And when I sat there and created a person at two meters high um, and it was just a box that was supposed to represent a person and he wasn't even half as tall as a bullet <laughs> so I'm like okay I gotta fix that <laughs> so with this one I created the character at the height that I wanted it to be created a reference object for a nine millimeter bullet resized the weapon and the bullet object so that the bullet fit that nine millimeter diameter and effectively, as a result, the gun is the size that it needs to be now. That's still, I mean, it it's an okay size, but to me that looks much more Desert Eagle than 9 Yeah, mil. well, that's, that's mainly because of the size of the character. Um, like, this is basically going to be the base mesh for Danielle when she's younger. And okay, then I'm gonna gotcha. work on a, Yeah, and then I'm going to work on a second mesh that will be like an adult character, the pilot that saves her saves her life, basically. Gotcha. Um, and I expect on that one, it will appear much more appropriate. And like I said, that looks fine, but if somebody pulled that on me, I'd, I'd be like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. As opposed to I my reaction to anyone else pulling any size gun <laughs> on me. but. Well, and I originally pictured uh, this character, if she were armed, that it would be on the hip. And this quickly showed me that I was like, well, if it's that size of firearm, the hip isn't going to be good for that for for her size. It would have to be on the thigh. Yeah, hard draw from the hip. Yeah. Now, is that the uh, wireframe right behind the render there? Uh, yep. Yeah, you basically you can shut off turbo smooth, and this is the base mesh for the uh, whole thing. Q full size it. Oh, yeah. There we go.
So, like, I've got the Turbo Smooth. That's basically what, what, uh, what it has on it whenever I'm rendering. And I'll be once I get around to rigging it, I'll be setting up additional detail where it needs so that the mesh doesn't tear. Or, or yeah, I was, I was just going to ask about some additional tessellation at the joints. Yeah, I've never rigged a character before, so it's one of those things that I I figured I'd cross that bridge when I come to it, kind of thing. That's coming along good. Have you done a character before? This is my first. Really? Ever. Yeah. That's very good. I was quite surprised. I figured it would take at least a few weeks just to get the chest, the torso down. Well, beyond time, just uh, the polygon work is very elegant for a first attempt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Actually, if I uh, I went back and I was looking at some old legacy tutorials for 3D Studio, and it was Zach working on that alien mesh. Ah, gotcha. And I figured, well, I could do a carbon copy. I have those reference images. I could follow the tutorial exactly, or I could just try and apply the methods and just see what I come up with on my own. And so far, that seems to work. <laughs> yeah, that's coming along really nicely. Now, uh... Nick, chime in, because you have done character work before, right? Yeah, um, I haven't rigged him recently. The only thing I'm seeing is you might, once you go to rig it, you might have to move some of those points and, like, recut some of the topology because you have uh, you have some, like, triangular points I don't where there's more than four, point, like, four lines coming into it, meeting up in some points that might need to move. Okay. And if those points need to deform, you'll end up with a spike coming out of it just because that's the way it it works. Um, I'm not actually sure if they're elbow deform enough for you to have to worry about it, but that was always sort of like driven home to me when I was in class. Okay. Yeah, if you do uh, well, have if a... there's an opportunity, I wouldn't mind comparing notes with you. Yeah, like, I don't know, like, there's one, like, on her butt, kind of, that I'm looking at, and that seems like something that might end up deforming. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm probably going to be adding some more detail in there. Oh, the triangle yeah. right there? Yeah, the triangle. You, you generally want to avoid triangles oh, anywhere where you can have deformation. Um, just because they end okay. up deforming funny relative to everything else. Yeah, and unfortunately... But that's really when, my only comment. Unfortunately, okay. when you deform it and you get that polygon jump, they can really spike in crazy, crazy ways. Okay. Yeah, so, but, but other than that, it looks really good. So, so to, to fix that, you'd have to make a whole new line uh, if he's using if he's using that you can't just make a line and split well it I think to go all the way through it right? I think if I understand the theory behind it I think the idea is that you terminate that in a point that doesn't deform very much yeah like like okay. the chest maybe um like usually I was told oh. to put it like someplace like yeah like wouldn't deform so the chest was usually an okay place as long as it was some place that you wouldn't have any animation, like you wouldn't want breasts to uh, have points like right where they deform, kind of funny. So maybe but, terminate it somewhere up in here, on the side. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go look. Like I haven't rigged a model or even modeled a character in way too long. I should probably do that sometime soon. <laughs> All right. Now, Nick, so, Nick, yeah, when I, you I, rigged I him, I have no doubt I'll be dealing with that. But... Sorry. Go ahead. So, Nick, when you did your rigging, did you work with the CAT system, or did you build your rig yourself? Uh, I I used the CAT system, I think, where it whatever the max's default skeleton was, because I had some mocap files that I used, and then had to like basically go back and tweak really heavily. Cool. Yeah, I know but... there's uh, there's biped. I def I definitely want to play with CAT at least as far as creating a walk cycle, because. Uh, uh, just, you have more options to play around with that, I think. Uh, the cat system is very, very cool. I, I have not used it much, but it's it, you just play with it a little bit, and you can tell there's so much you can do that would be so hard to do manually. Yeah, and as much as I don't mind the idea of sitting in front of you know the the uh, Xbox Connect and acting like a goof. I don't know how to walk like a girl, so uh, I'm not going to try. 
But if you do, please oh. video capture it. We want to see it. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I won't see it. <laughs> you, you also, you might want to look at uh, uh, the Maya modeling thing. There's one where um, Zach models uh, um, a woman. And uh, I know it's it's Maya, but uh, still the same at, principles. At the end uh, of the day, yeah, it's still the... vertices and surfaces. So yeah, yeah you're uh, you're talking about the uh, third person character controller series. No, 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 oh. no. It's no. Um... back. It's mastering Maya uh, modeling. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, now I remember that one. Uh, yeah. Although you might want to look at the third person character one. I don't. I never actually went through that one. I don't know if he actually models that character or just kind of presented well, it, but that's a female game character. So, yeah, I, I went he... through I went through the coding aspect of it, but I never did find anything that pertained to the model itself. Yeah, I I think he just made that on his own. I don't think he, he should. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. But I figure it's one of those things that once this character is set up properly, um, I'm hoping that the turbo smooth by itself will be enough that I can generate a normal map and I won't have to worry about retopologizing this model for game. There's, there's also in Blender, in the Blender cl class, the second one, uh, we were modeling a, like a cartoon type um, girl. Uh, uh, so it wasn't, it was, we were using fewer um, we weren't using a lot of vertices. Uh, we never, we never, we never finished it, but we, we almost finished it. I think we had, maybe only had one more class. But anyway, it's, you could probably learn some stuff from that. Cool. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. yeah. Sweet deal. Awesome. You're doing some fine work, sir, and getting Thank in a lot can. of hours, despite your job. I'm impressed. Well, uh, the other nice thing about this, though, is like it can apply to everything else I'm working on, too. So, like, there's a strategy game that I'm working on that an entire portion of it, it was being left alone because I have no character models to work with. And this could potentially change that, so. Oh, Very cool. What, one, one more thing that you look at. Um, uh, that, um, was it ADP? Was it Advanced Digital Yeah, Advanced production? Digital Production. Yeah, that one. Uh, so there's like the goblin and the uh, and the knight, so that uh, that might be helpful as well. Sweet. Okay. Be forewarned, yeah, it, though, it, that is a ton of videos to to wade through for what you're looking for. That is <laughs> yeah, a huge but, course. But I mean, you just there's there's you look at um, model. I mean, you you don't have to watch it in order. They're all in. Uh, sections. So yeah, you, you can, can just watch, you can just hunt down particular modeling. characters. And, and also, you want to learn about rigging. They uh, go over rigging in that. So uh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. They go over everything in that basically. Awesome. I'll check them out for sure. Yeah. Very nice. Well, I would say is that all you have for us? But that was actually quite a bit. Good job, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Alrighty, Nick, do you have stuff loaded up? Because I saw stuff dropping from you all week in the Dropbox. Yeah, I've got stuff loaded up. Awesome. Uh, Alright, let me... I keep keep getting ready to tell Nelson to change it for me. I'm like, oh yeah, it's I have to do it. <laughs> what was that? I have my name. I said I keep getting ready to ask you to grab somebody else for me, and then I look at the thing and be like, oh yeah, I can do that now. <laughs> Watching a presentation on terrains right now. So oh, very I'm cool. Not very responsive. That's fine, man. You do what you got to do. I saw this peep pop up pop up earlier. I was very excited to hear you talk about this. This very cool looking oh. piece. So basically, after class last week, I decided I wanted to draw stuff getting like blown up and exploded. So I was just like, well, let's have some Lethians fight humans and see what happens. So this is what I came up with for that. Um. Yeah, so I do do some like bigger mechs because I figured the humans would be using mechs and like people like monkeying around with robots in the foreground and sensor buoys and stuff, and them getting blown up by Alethians shooting spell lightning things from different places on the map. 
Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Yes, you're very good at LARPing. <laughs> did you play it? Did you, did you hear the desperation in my, in my uh, I did. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, I saw this pop up minutes after the class and like, oh, he's going to get a flack for, you know, why wasn't this ready before? <laughs> no, I, I started it towards the end of class and didn't finish it till after. And I said nothing. I was just excited when I saw it pop up. <laughs> But yeah, there's that one. Um, there's a robot shooting some missiles behind the uh, behind that little sensor buoy thing. But yeah, it got covered up. How did you make all those little chains? Did you? Uh, um, did I have you a sweet chain brush. Modularly? Oh, chain brush. Good. <laughs> because it's concept art, and if you have a faster way to do it, use no, it. Yeah. There's no such thing as cheating. No. It's it's kind of depressing to think of going and doing each one of those. I've done it before, and it was time-consuming, yeah. and I'm just like, yeah. I don't have time for that nonsense right now. Exactly. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, you want to be able to do it, but you, that doesn't mean that you always have to do it. But yeah, that, that's sort of how I was visualizing uh, combat between the humans and Aletheans, and then I started thinking, you know, maybe that's too far away, because if your character got blasted by something like that, you'd, you'd be angry, because you couldn't even see who was shooting at you. But, the, you know, it might be something cool to have happen in the background. The scale is... Oh, yeah. uh... Well, I'll use the word impressive. Because I assume some of those little flecks I see are actually, like, Aletheian-sized in the distance. Well, like, the, the people, like, there's some little dots around that robot that are supposed to be people, so the, you wouldn't even be able to really see the Aletheans. I figure that's sort of, like, more major than just one or two people shooting at each other. That's one of those things you'd see, like yeah. a major instance or boss fight kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, for it's like an attack on the city, you've got that stuff raining down from outside that you generally don't see, but you see the results of it happening all around you. Yeah, so I figured, you know, that's either something you'd want to see in like a load screen, just to be like impressed with something as you load it into an instance, like, oh, I don't want to be hit by that kind of thing, or... Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, that, yeah. that mech really is like the size of a downtown Chicago building. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pretty good sized. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that would that would make a cool load screen or uh, or cut scene, but I I don't think I'd even want to play if I ran into that on a point. <laughs> oh, that's that's the kind of thing. That, I'm up. <laughs> that, that's the kind of thing you go blow up with like forty Elethians. You just like, come on, buddies, let's go take this guy out. <laughs> now, what made you choose this uh, color palette? I messed around with gradients after I did black and white. Cool. So you just ran and, a gradient over your values and just looked for a color you liked? Yeah. I like the purple-orange gradient because it gets me good results, and that's generally what I'll just throw on top of black and white stuff because it generally looks cool. Yeah, it, does, it looks cool. Well, uh, it gives that very visceral look, and it's like, you know, you hear those stories about people in London that they say the world was on fire. And that's exactly what yeah. this makes me think of. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to know how awesome the bluish purple to orange thing is, look at most everything Epic has ever put out. The, yeah. the amount of yeah, times exactly they like use it. those colors is staggering. Uh, I think it would be nice to the in the foreground if we could see those a little bit more. If that maybe the light was a little bit more because it's uh, it's concept art. Yeah. Ah, like, I just literally drew one robot and copied him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's your guy shooting the missiles. Sweet. Well, you know, it's like, uh, maybe, you know, you, like, right there is even enough, but maybe just a little bit more light. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it's kind of, because it, it makes me kind of squint to try and see them, because I'm curious about them. So... That's yeah, like I didn't a... put enough detail into him, so I'm perfectly okay with you squinting and. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like, like I don't Good think they need answer. enough. Like, like just, just the, the parts where you're lighting them. Maybe if that was a little bit brighter. Well, this, this would, know. this it, would it be like uh, where we talked about last week, where when you're doing isn't original concepts, it's going to be very fast and very down and dirty. This is something right. like where it popped up very small before I even opened it, I saw it as like, oh, that looks really cool. I like it that. It does look really cool. And that's where I would go back and say, hey, we, we really like this one. Can you detail that out? And then right. and then Nick exactly. would invest uh, however many hours in making a, a final. 
Yeah. Right, which is what this is why I, what I'm saying. <laughs> I really like this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I weren't signing okay, up for I'll another art show, I'd probably put right. more on it. But right. That's I, fine. It, 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 you know, even you know whether you do or you don't, I think it's uh, it's good to talk about like what you know because I'm looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes. You've been working on this for however long, so. I spent an hour and a half on it and then ignored it. Like, that was my goal. I'm just like, I'm going to stop after about an hour and a half. And right. I actually saw a Facebook post from her. He's like, I haven't done much work and I have to do some now. And then, bloop, that popped up. And then I didn't hear anything anymore. I'm like, okay, well, he did what he wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, because I was, like, exhausted by the time I was finished with it. And then here's the next one I worked on, and I spent more time on it than I intended to, but that's okay. Um, oh dear. I wanted to, like, imagine, since the Aletheans, like, we were talking about whatever it was a couple weeks ago, where the Aletheans, like, have an easy time building big, but not, like, building things with fine detail. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, well, how would they transport stuff from Earth back to Aletheia? They'd build something huge and transport huge amounts of stuff all at once, instead of building a bunch of littler things to pull stuff away. So I figured they'd pile up the silicon life in one area and build a gigantic like portal building, basically, and be like, I'm going to suck it all back up with my giant portal gun. And I figured that would look cool and epic. I, nice. I'm just going to hang out a second with you saying giant portal gun, because that just makes me happy inside. But... <laughs> <laughs> OK. Now, if only so... that had been blue and orange, that, that would have done it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just like But no, uh in all serious though, so that yeah, that's a great idea that they would build this just massive portal complex. That... And, and you know, they'd only have like one or two on the planet, so they wouldn't use it for combat because they wouldn't want to get it blown up because they spend so much time and effort building it kind of thing. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm sold on uh, on the idea that they can't do little details. They can do little details, it's just more expensive like time-wise for them to do the details like it's yeah. easy for them to build like a giant cube, basically, but it'd be a lot harder for them to build add, add detail to the cube kind of thing. Yeah, as long as they can do it. Uh, yeah, yeah it's it's not that they can't do it; it's just more time consuming. Yeah, so I mean, it, like resources. It makes more sense to build one gigantic thing for them and then do things in bulk, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially it's no different than us, except from the opposite end, where it's yeah, very like, expensive for us to build something massive. That's very easy for them, but small detailed things are a lot of uh, time and effort versus not necessarily much gain for it. So. so they're yeah they're more likely to have the huge epic buildings, and they're not going to think as much of it because it's like us massive mass producing like basically like trailer parks or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I actually really like that idea. And, okay, I have to so say, simple. I saw this pop up earlier, so I yanked it up, and I was looking at the other ones, and I clicked on this. I'll admit, I laughed out loud. But <laughs> Yeah, so I was just like, I'm going to spend less than 10 minutes on the next two I do, because I wanted to do like two really simple ones. So I was just like, well, let's draw how this gigantic thing works. So I figure it's like this huge, like sort of semi-underground like skyscraper kind of building. It'll like, transport everything up and then dump it back down on, the, on the, either side of the portal kind of thing, so it's like a gigantic vacuum, basically. Gotcha. Very cool. I like the idea. This is the portal to Earth? So, yeah, I'm, I'm figuring they'll have something else to transport people, because you wouldn't want to, like, a space laser people back to home or whatever. Somebody falls off the edge, so they fall through the portal well, and well, a couple the, hundred feet later. Uh, as, as Ray had it, uh, they, they traveled through the portal in little uh, ships so that they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't like uh, uh, come out in between a, a, a tree or a rock or something you know so they'd be above the earth and then come yeah. down so yeah I guess they could be using the same machine to get there because I mean if you have a big yeah. portal it's pretty easy to dump like send a small machine through and... um, yeah. has, has anyone ever seen the movie Contact? yeah uh, I know it, I've seen it. It's been time. so long. It, yeah. it kind of reminds me of that, where they had the little yeah, yeah. ball she was in, and then they dropped right. her Drop into her. the... Yeah. And that was a very neat idea. I like that. It was. 
So yeah, I figured that'd be their giant little portal building thing that they get around the universe with. And it comes out in like a cool stormy thing where you just see like part of the building from the inside of all places. Yeah, Sweet. very cool. <laughs> All right, what else we got? I know there's one more. Uh, I did some, like, I was sort of thinking the same way, you know, it's easier for them to build big, so wouldn't they all live in, like, these big skyscrapers where they built, like, a giant, like, skyscraper with a bunch of little boxes that you could customize for your house, basically. Cool. Uh, now, I, when I looked at this, I had to ask, because when we originally started, we were talking about uh, uh, things on Earth echoing Aletheian architecture. And the yeah. very first one to me, I opened it up. I'm like, oh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yeah. Was, was it on purpose? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Because I was like <laughs> looking through historical towers and I tried to combine like multiple things. So. <laughs> okay, good. I feel good about myself now. I, I like I like uh, the look of these. Now, it, it, these are buildings or these are houses? They're like a skyscraper where, you know, you can yeah. walk up the outside where it's like spiraled or there's okay. like these huge long staircases. But what, you like what, go through the door. I wasn't sure if you were saying that they're supposed to be their houses because they build big, and I think that no, might no, be a, much, like, a little much. I think if you have a like, if you're capable of building these huge things, you build together as a society more, and then customize yeah. your own little area within the big societal structure kind of thing. Yeah, their their cities would like tend to look, look more like a single object to us at a distance than ours do. And if there was like yeah. a big city, it would be more like just a downtown without the suburbs kind of thing, where you have these huge tall buildings yeah. with different functions. Yeah, cool. I like those, uh, particularly the the one on the right. I really like that idea of all those little terraces popping out. Yeah, I figure the more yeah. the people that have more time or money would have more time to build but, stuff outside of their house, basically, where you could walk out on a balcony or something. No, is is that greenery stuff? Is that is that actual plants and stuff like? Uh, off, off of my idea. Or... That's like a forest, yeah. Yeah, just to give a that's... sense of scale. Oh no, no, I mean oh, like wow. on the buildings. <laughs> like yeah, uh, uh, trees or, and stuff. Yeah, the green stuff would all be like trees and stuff. Like, yeah, the... good. Because it's like their like their park is on their buildings with them. That's that's kinda... yeah. So like the middle of one, I was like kind of boring starting out kind of thing where I'm just like you know hanging gardens where you just build this terraced sort of structure with stuff growing on it basically and just like what if you had like spirals and staircases and stuff uh, if you had central park and grand wonder... central station crammed together and they were 400 <laughs> feet high yeah that's, that's, that's kind of what yeah. i was going for yeah i like that i like that idea a lot a... i was thinking it could be a case where if they all work together to build something it's like you know those massive structures are like the first draft and then later on you get people that are good at working with small details, and they're the ones that go in and do some finer interior design type stuff. However, that applies to Aletheian yeah. architecture. And like the more decorated the building, the wealthier it would be, basically, because you have more time to have the like artisans go in and work on the details. It, yeah. With with the the concept of it being looking like one structure, um, it it'd be interesting. I, I think maybe there should be a lot of um, bridges from building to building kind of thing so they don't have to go all the way down because because if it's all if it's more thought of as a commute rather than a separate building more of a part of the community yeah. city that you know it makes sense for them to like be connected that way rather than going hey no this is my building <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, I was sort of doing individual buildings, and I think that would be like something right. they'd add on later where we're too oh, big yeah. for this building we built before. Let's build another one. Well, I do kind of see the inside of it being like that, though, where you may have these large open spaces that are interconnected yeah, with terraces of... and bridges. and. Yeah, I could do a concept of like the interior for next week, I think. Um, which brings um, me to my next question. I really like the design in a third-person MMO. Do you think that needs to be more open, or do you think that this would be big enough that it's not really going to affect cameras, or how do how do you see that well, working? I guess I could see you like I could see having like a bigger communal entrance where it wouldn't be such a big deal. Then you'd more look up at the houses and the cool things up there, and you wouldn't necessarily get to them on your own. You'd have to go through like a portal or like an elevator kind of thing where you'd end up at your own little house you could customize. Um, 
So, I mean, if it's the main city, these things are going to be huge, and you're yeah. going to walk through this gigantic main gate, and then you're going to be looking up through the skyscraper with all the bridges and people walking around kind of thing. But you really wouldn't have any reason story-wise to go up there. I mean, unless you had, like, a, you know, a personal house you could buy or something like that up there that you'd customize through instancing. So you did think yeah. about it, and that makes me happy. <laughs> well, I, I really, like, the third-person camera... It's not as big of an obstacle, I don't think, as as some people have worried about. Because I mean, when the camera's farther away, it's directly behind your character. But yeah, I mean, it, it's not like the camera is a mile yeah. behind the character or anything. But yeah, yeah I mean, well, I mean, and it's it's one of those things that if something gets too close behind the character, the camera just zooms in. And if it zooms in too close, then it shifts off to the side, so you're looking over the shoulder. You can still see what's in front of you. Cool. The other thing I really like about this is uh, up close as a game level, it can be magnificent. And yeah. and if we have uh, like an arena match that's say on the edge of a cliff on a mountain, that can be an extremely massive, very low poly, still incredibly epic thing off in the distance of the map. Yeah, that's kind of what it was. I was going for like epic from a distance and really cool like inside, so you could have a cool looking city and something you could see on the horizon as you were exploring kind of thing. Well, you definitely got to design A+. Plus. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was also I was also approaching it from the perspective that a lot of these ancient human cultures built these massive buildings with nothing more than ritualistic purpose. And if they were doing that, wouldn't like whatever, if they were influenced by the Lethians, wouldn't they have these huge epic structures of their own? Wouldn't they have an easy time building them where humans could see them kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, especially if the Alethians, I mean, if the Alethians went there and helped starting building things, yeah, they, they would have built like they were used to, and and humanity would have been like, wow, that thing's massive and cool, and what's it do? Well, we take people up to the top and we cut off their heads, but other than that, it doesn't do much. But... <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. that's really cool. That's epic. <laughs> No, I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's pretty much all over. Um, yep. Yeah, I am definitely looking forward to seeing some uh, some inside concepts. I think I don't know what it is. It's that, that one on the right, really, really. <clears throat> if if I was a client and you offered those as separate pieces, that's the one I'd tell you to work up. I I just see yeah. so much potential in that. It, it was the last one I worked on, so the ideas just kind of gelled completely by the time I got to that one. That's very so, neat. I cannot wait to sweet. see some more close-ups of that. That's just huge amounts of potential there. I think yep. he's dropping a hint. <laughs> Do I need to say so. it one more time? <laughs> <laughs> so detailed working inside on that building next time is what I'm going to be doing. Or, or, or even some of the, just like the closer up outside, like some of the terracing and, and some of the walkways going up. It just there's there's so many pieces of that that you could do cool art for. It, okay. it makes it makes me really happy that you put greenery on that. I'm yeah. glad that that idea is still going forward. Yeah, and I looked at that and I was like, oh, there's some plants and stuff. And now you're saying, well, like that one little spot over there is a forest, which really makes me want to see concept art for it. There, I got it in one more time. All right. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely work up that building for next time from multiple views and stuff. So push up those details. <laughs> Secular. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, we got Sergio, and I know I saw him popping some stuff up too. Let me grab this. Sergio, you ready to go, man? Yeah. All righty, coming at you. Awesome. Yeah, I loved the color scheme Sweet. with this. Yeah, I, uh, I actually uh, fucked a lot with this one. Um, mostly because I'm actually getting out of my comfort zone. Uh, normally I just do characters. That's why I started doing environments. And I've never even saw a desert in my life. 
and the, the night uh, light, I mean the 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 night uh, scene, it's something that always gives me trouble. So this one was uh, kind of uh, a big problem for me. <laughs> um, starry skies, there's a trick to doing them, and without that trick, yeah, they're a they're a time sucking pain <laughs> to do. <laughs> <laughs> what will be the the trick? Uh, basically, it's some um, uh, you use Photoshop, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just some adjustments to your basic hard brush. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, actually, I I did a brush when I did this. I did a brush just for that because I didn't knew how to do it. So I let me see. That was another thing. That's coming along well. <laughs> I started a few minutes ago. I, I actually, I, I, not minutes, uh, right about the time you switch uh, screens because I'm actually half dead right now. <laughs> and uh, I needed to do something or I will fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been running a lot of hours the last few weeks. Yeah, I'm... I'm having a, a few problems in one of my shops. Uh, someone uh, resigned, so... Oh, God, so the workload is even heavier. Yeah. Yeah. Yippee. <laughs> Basically, I, I threw a, a few um, points with the standard brush, and... Um, Since I wasn't, let me see. Oh, there it is. Um, I didn't know how to do it because uh, normally I was trying to do it the same. Uh, sorry, the same way I do this. Um, I do these ones, uh, which is with some scattering, but it wasn't working. Uh, so I threw a few dots in there and I just created a brush. brush yeah it was easier because um, I could just have some scattering oh wait there we go angle shader and, and all of that and, and just painted with that it was easier all I did after that was uh, pretty much a gradient to a, a gradient selection to to erase, so it wouldn't come uh, with the same strength from top to bottom. Cool. Yeah, looks. I don't looks know if nice. that's. Uh, I don't know if that's what you. Uh, some of what you were uh, thinking about. With the trick, um, well, the trick I totally is, interrupted you. No, Sorry. The, the trick is actually uh, the trick is actually just for the stars themselves. I I too often use a gradient unless it's actually in space. Um, mm -hmm. But now that I think about it, since I uh, fired up my new computer and I reloaded uh, Photoshop Creative Cloud, I no longer have the star brush I made. So maybe I'll do a little tutorial for the daily drop on a space scene. And just Sweet. and just throw it cool. up there because I'm gonna have to remake the brush anyway. So, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, uh, unlike yours where you actually made a brush that has a bunch of stars. Um, I I used the hard brush yeah. at a very small diameter of like five or seven, and it's only got like three stars. But by the time you set up all the scattering and everything, you just paint in little circles and you get a really nice star scene. But, but yeah, um, I'll do that this week. I'll do a little space scene and throw it up on Daily Drop and show everybody how I made the brushes and planets, and and that'll be fun. I'd like that to see more development see. on that, Steve. <laughs> you what? <laughs> You'd like to see more development? I'd like to see more development on that, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do. All right. I'm busted. Thanks. <laughs> well, uh, this one was... Um... 
actually uh, when we when I first uh, show a sketch of something like this, um, it was uh, thought uh, more uh, for a level or something like that. So I threw a few people in there, some religions in the bag and that. Uh, and I threw the crystals. Uh, I, I think Wolf uh, told me to. I don't remember. Probably. He can be pretty boss. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's junk if there's no crystals. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, uh, I mean, for never having done environments, this is pretty darn good. The, actually, the first ones I did uh, were the first ones I dropped uh, in here. The, the old ones I showed That's... you, the first class I came, are the first ones I did. Wow. I'm more of a character uh, artist, let's say. Uh, it... So, yeah. Um, it, it's looking like it's good for me because I'm. I think I. I am growing, but yeah. I know. Yeah, I do. I'm just the opposite. I love environments, and I'm terrible with characters. And you're gonna make me have to push myself <laughs> to do more characters. Um, uh, it's a, it's a good time to mention. It's looking like uh, Derek's going to be freed up to join us next week for class and maybe do awesome. some stuff. Oh, awesome, uh, Sergio, you haven't gotten to meet him yet. Uh, he was one of the instructors we did have till his other job precluded him from doing this. He's the same way as you. He he loves characters. He avoids environments generally if he can. He'll call me up and yeah. be like, "I need an environment." I'm like, okay, <laughs> but but yeah, that should be a good time. And he he will he will just go gaga over some of this stuff. I added a. All I'm putting in the Dropbox actually has the layers, so if someone wants to toy with them, they can. Oh, cool! You dropped a PSD uh, in there. No, it's just the TIFF file, but uh, I save all with layers. So. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I did like seeing the color on this. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh. awesome! Oh, sweet. Uh, it's <laughs> just a uh, just a few. Um, Silhouettes not not really worked, but uh, it was. Um, I was having trouble, and I'm still. I, I still don't like this one. I think the perspective is off somewhere, and I cannot catch it. So I threw a few people in there to see if I could if, if I could detect the problem, but uh, I can't. the 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 main reason for that is that this is all I could do uh, in the week. Yeah. Uh, with good, the workload. Oh yeah, no, dude, you you've been putting out a ton of work considering your situation. You you will get no complaints here. What, um, what, what, no, the thing what is, thing? Uh, it's not uh, it's not that I'm justifying myself. It's just that um, the thing is, I kind of get uh, got tired of it, so I couldn't really uh, continue with it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. To. Oh, so <laughs> so sometimes I, I you gotta walk aside. away. Yeah. Um, um, perspective. Two things. Perspective wise. Um, it it's. I agree. Just to look at it, it's a little bit wonky. I don't think it's as bad as you feel it is, only because you have so many buildings that are sitting at odd angles. It's not like a city block. So it kind of yeah. makes the perspective feel a little off when it's not that bad um the only things i catch that really say that's a little weird is uh like that middle small building the roof line's a little off at the top this one uh no yeah, no actually, no the, the, um, the little small building to the left down maybe? down and to the left yeah that one that? yeah that roof line's got like a little this? boat no down no below the the with the with the curtain ah, with the, the shop, curtain on it shop. The, the, the shop the market, the yeah. yeah yeah the roof line on that's just a little off and it's got a bit but of a bow it, to it it's supposed to be leaning up yeah. right yeah but, but I mean, not, compared uh, to the building next they're to not it. in the same perspective yeah. but yeah yeah, yeah I, the perspective is uh 
But uh, I, I think if you made it look like it was made out of like corrugated plastic or something like that, it wouldn't bother you nearly as much yeah. once you add a texture to it. Well, and, um, and I say the roof line, but it really it could be either the roof line or the two front panels on it. If you look at the top of the perspective on that top panel, it's ste- yeah. it's steeper than the roof. Yeah. And and oh, that's yeah, right, where yeah. it's off. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's a... But well, yeah, but I mean really it's, it's it's not very much off and yeah, Nick's right. If if you added in some corrugation and stuff, it would just disappear. One one thing that I'm I'm seeing and and the, the people really made me think of it. But first, uh, it's it looks a little too clean, like I I think. But I mean, it's that maybe you just hadn't add, added that details to it. I think it um, should look a little more run down and and uh, uh, just like stapled together. You know, you know, like they keep, you know, duct taping it. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, not they more, should uh, be like, more uh, um, r- rugged, squalor. Yeah. And, and but the people maybe think that because they look like they're dressed too well, like they. Um, yeah, I just I have like, a, I just uh, got a, a few silhouettes and uh-huh. dropped them there. I I didn't really do that okay. much. Yeah. That's why they don't really match up. Uh, this is more like <laughs> it's filler. I don't know. Yeah, okay. it was mo- uh, mostly for me to to see how it will work. Yeah, got uh, it. But not that, not that, uh, not really designed for this actually. Um, do keep them though, because a, a couple of the yeah. lines on the on the clothing I really like, especially on that yeah. lady that's in the foreground. That that kind of half hood thing, that's very cool. I like that. Yeah. Uh, that's good stuff. But no, they man, that's, that's coming along good. And, yeah, and a lot I, of that, I, I mean, yeah, we can dirty it up in the concept work, but right. in, in the engine, even if all the models look just like this, give me three or four decals and we'll make it look grungy in no time. That's, that's not yeah. that big a deal. Yeah. Um, okay, there we go. After that, I finally finished the characters, <laughs> the ones that I've been oh. uh, dragging since, yeah. <laughs> since the first time I, I got here. It's not that different, but I think it works. That's cool. And, uh, oh, nice color. Yeah, the. Uh, normally, uh, the, I mean, the color is just a layer on top right now, set in color uh, blending mon- mode. Yep. But normally, uh, the idea is you collapse that and actually paint over that because uh, there are a lot of. If you're taking it to an illustration level, there are a, a lot of uh, stuff that aren't showing, um, like subsurface scattering and all of that, but. Oh, for concept yeah. though, dude, you're you're way ahead of the game. No worries. Yeah, the uh, this face gave me so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, uh, there is something really uh, special with women face faces. Uh, in a man, you can draw lines. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's very you, hard to give women details and still keep them soft and womanly. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to do. Let me see. Um, yeah, other than that, I refine and drop in and put in the Dropbox uh, the lithium model. I didn't refine that much the body because um, Dude, you- it's mostly a base to to. Put some armor and design directly in the in the model if you want, or even render that and draw on top of it. Dude, you nailed the nose. <laughs> I <laughs> love the nose. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, I I I think I would um, try to uh, get this plane a, a little bit. Uh, further up, so uh, yeah, a little more recessed. It will have that effect. 
Yeah. But the shape, but the shape is that, awesome. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted. That's amazing. Nice Perfect. job. The ears are good that's too. The, he did ears. That's more. Yeah. That's more what yeah. I wanted. Than what I wanted. It's more than what you wanted. No, it's more what I wanted. Oh, more of than what you what wanted. I wanted. Okay, awesome, good. Everyone likes yeah, it. Yeah, I, I just. I think it looks more. It, it, it looks more alien than what we were originally doing. Yeah, it's kind of more unique. It, that's why I I did this um, this kind of nose. I was uh, actually. Uh, during a lot of uh, just the, the nostrils were uh, uh, just lines actually uh, so I did this to, to add a, a um, to separate it a bit more right and the noses are gonna vary just like ours do it, th this is what I like yeah because people will actually be playing these characters that's very alien but that's a handsome devil too. <laughs> I mean, when you when you want to be an Alethian, you'll be like, "Oh, I look really cool." Uh. <laughs> Although it would suck when they catch a cold. Let me see. Um, I put. Um, a few files in the Dropbox uh, under my Dropbox under my folder. I I separated most of the stuff, organized it. Um, but let me see. You have uh, these three, which are decimated OBJs. Um, they will be uh, a bit a bit heavy, like 500k in polycount or something like that. But uh, I also put uh, a max, uh, which has the full body except for the feet. I didn't do the feet. Um, but it's already optimized, so you can retopologize it. Oh, cool. Um, Sweet. I actually did a read me on this because I didn't know uh, how you work. I, I mean, I did this. I never did this professionally. I just did it for me. We're we're not sure how we work yet either, Sergio. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in the max, you have uh, that model separated and um, in a in a separate layer and freezed. So, but yeah, that's there uh, if you want to toy with it. Um, I don't have really much more to show because uh, I'm nearly dead. Uh, <laughs> so fu funny enough, that's perfect because it's 10:06. So I, not only did everyone do good work, but their timing was outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> I I did want to have I did want to make one comment on future tech. Okay. May. Comment away, good sir. Well, I mean, because you you. you, you Kind of making fun of my future tech thing, and uh, <laughs> when did I, I make fun I need, of your future tech well, thing? You, and you're saying you're saying that it, it needs to be more than future. To, that's not a good answer. But <laughs> let's uh, imagine, and I know this is this is partially an absurd uh, uh, comparison, but uh, or. Uh, not comparison, but I don't know. My, my mind's getting tired. So whatever it is, uh, <laughs> uh, imagine we we're, were, te were having this concept class a um, few hundred years ago before um, we invented steel, and and I I had an idea for a skyscraper building. You're like you're laughing at that. You're like, well, yeah, look, that's going to collapse it on itself. You know, that's it's not strong enough. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I see where you're going. <laughs> you know, but because we didn't have steel steel to support all this, and you know, and the design to the know how to uh, to the architectural know how to uh, 
make that a sound structure. And so I, I couldn't tell you it's going to be steel. I don't know it's going to be invented yet. You know, I'm going to say, well, there's going to be a strong material, and it's going to be that. You know, but I'm, what I'm going to say is basically future tech. And you go, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, that'll be the day when we get to uh -huh. You know, next, come on, let's do something practical well, here. Wolf, you've been hanging on to this for a while, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hang on to that. <laughs> Note to self, do not give Wolf a hard time. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll I'll buy that. You can get away with you can get away with saying future tech. I, I will buy that argument. Thank you. <laughs> we should put that in the game someplace where you know, some guy's just like, How does this work? And you're just like, Oh, it's future, it's future tech. tech. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Have a have a big long diatribe of the guy yelling at him for it. I can I can call it that. What is the name of a company? Ooh, there you go. Ah. Yeah, I can see that on the side of a building somewhere. Wolf's Future Tech. Yeah. No one but there, us there will be, know. The, I was just gonna say the emblem could be a, a, a picture of a wolf. There you go. Head. <laughs> it would have to be robotic with like laser eyes. Or one, one laser eye. Oh no, a chainsaw mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody's getting tired. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, outstanding work this week. That is very impressive. Um, I'm looking forward to. Uh, am I going to get feet, Sergio? Mm -hmm. Am I going to get feet? Uh, I Sculpt don't know. Ruler. <laughs> Sculpt a ruler. Uh, works on it. <laughs> Ah, Richard, Richard, I actually, Richard. I already uh, had Wolf, Richard. <laughs> I don't need you to. I actually okay. put the uh, the the tool uh, for ZBrush too. So if you want to make them, I have no objection. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Uh, actually, now I don't. I've got to get it reinstalled again. Oh. <laughs> I had to replace my computer, and I've been just today. I was talking to Richard. I was like, uh, "Oh yeah, I don't have it." Or no, I was talking what? to Derek. I was like, "Oh yeah, I never reinstalled Unity." <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Oops. What, what program was that that you were viewing the pictures in? Uh, which one? Uh, this one that you just had. Uh, were you in Adobe Bridge? Bridge. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I, this computer is already dying. I, Sergio, I know that you are just getting crammed right now, so um, you get a free pass. You can do whatever you do or do not want to do for this week, especially with somebody else missing at work. Uh, Nick's going to do some detail for me. Uh, Richard's going to detail some up some stuff, and uh, Wolf, Wolf, what are you doing for next week with your spanking new awesome computer? Yes. Uh, you should you should create a concept of a wolf with ch a chainsaw mouth. I, I will not. That. Oh. that is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> don't make and me we do it. And we <laughs> don't do ridiculous around here. You know that. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If I'm bored and I remember, we'll have a wolf. <laughs> you know. Too. Yeah, yeah. We we don't do ridiculous. I seem to recall some conversations about flying horses. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> came to my mind too. And sand penguins. And sand penguins. Yes, riding. Well, sand. sand penguins. That's okay. <laughs> space bears. Don't forget the space, space bears. Space bears. Yeah. <laughs> oh lord. Um, I, so I set up a couple of uh, biped objects in the scene here with the other character. Oh okay. Um, just check um, for like you know a uh, character with like a height of five foot eight or whatever. Stuck the pistol on that character. And uh, so yeah, that does give a sense of scale. So I'll have that ready for next week. Oh really? I was just going to make you presenter. Oh okay, I could do that too. <laughs> before, uh, before we go, I no. want to show you. Uh, you already left. Oh, damn it! I already left you. I'll come. Oh, I'll come back. Shoot. I'll come back in a second. No, no, it's okay. I, I shall give you the the address, and you, uh, if you, if you're into drawing, you will like the page mostly for poses. I actually saw it um, being used, uh, well not being used, but um, I, the link was, was given 
uh, in the level up videos. Oh, by one of the invited artists. All right, yeah. Uh, it, it's uh, I've been on it like only 20 minutes, but it's great for practicing uh, uh, poses. It's it's really good for making uh, quick sketches. Cool. cool. Um, you're gonna throw the link to that in uh, Buzznet. Yeah. Awesome. Let me see. I'll see if it's the same as the one I found earlier this week too, because someone else linked one that will give you like timed poses that for like gesture drawing. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Oh, cool. I haven't checked out the level up guys for a little while. Awesome so, guys. Though, yeah, they for are. whatever reason, I can't get the uh, reference images to show up properly here. That's fine. But uh, it works fine in the viewport. But basically, your head is up to about here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. If those are the bipeds, that gun is much more reasonable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, this character on the left, I'm basically picturing that would be about her height when she's all grown up, essentially. All right. Nice. Yeah, that works out well. Cool. All right, guys. That wraps it up. Uh, Wolf, I guess I'll let you surprise me for next week. Yeah. But I do expect something because you have your spanking new computer. We have to, <laughs> we have to celebrate that. Uh, you do an artistic rendering of your kick-ass new computer. <laughs> Will you stop? Ridiculous. Stop helping him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, on that note, we're going to cut the recording out. I will see you guys next week. Thank you very much for attending. You guys are awesome. Have a wonderful night. See you next time. See ya. Bye.